This week on Nation, we're going to be talking about giving them value and what you can do to add the, wait, there's more, to your business. What's up, everybody? Jersey here from WCR Nation. That was such a dumb intro. <laughs> oh, gosh. Everybody always says, you know, oh, you got a radio voice. Because I used to be on the radio for lots of years. But anyway, welcome to Nation if it's your first time here. Thanks for checking us out. Have a look around. You will more than likely find it acceptable. Uh, but if you are one of the cool kids, if you buy your supplies through me, being a window cleaning resource rep, what's going on? It is because of you that once a year, on my birthday, I get a real Choco Taco from the ice cream truck. Thank you very, very much. Um, no, really, I am a rep with Window Cleaning Resource, and I want to be your rep. I want to be your personal rep. Like, you got a guy, right? Like, you know. There it is. And if you want to buy your supplies through me or have any questions on anything, my cell phone, yes, this is my number. It is 862-312-2026. Call me. Text me. Put everything in your cart and then be like, yo, Jersey, it's in my cart. Let's do this. I get credit. You don't pay any extra. And you get like a virtual high five and maybe a shout out because that's like, you know, Reddit gold. It doesn't really mean anything, but... But there you go. And this week's shout out, speaking of, Park Hill, the man, uh, Aaron Rudy, what's going on? And of course, Mr. Bobby Walker with uh, his podcast. He did it last week with us. It was awesome. You guys really, really enjoyed that one. So that's very, very cool. If you have an idea for a podcast, let me know. Uh, shoot it to me in the video comments down below here on YouTube. If you're listening on iTunes or any of the other uh, podcast platforms, shoot me a text. 862-312-2026 or email jersey at windowcleaner.com. Let me know what you want to talk about or who you want to chat with, if anybody. But anyway, what's up? Thank you. Uh, do me a favor. If you are watching this on YouTube right now, go ahead and give me the thumbs up. There's always two of you that give me the thumbs down. You guys can go ahead too. It doesn't matter. But give me a thumbs up on the video just saying that you uh, like the content and that you're here. And of course, comment down below because why YouTube loves comments and it helps us out. Plus, I like talking back and forth with y'all. And it gives me people to give shoutouts to. So that's always cool too. But uh, uh, thank you for all that. Anyway. By the way, uh, last week's episode on the iTunes download was the largest we've ever had yet. So high five for you guys who are downloading it on iTunes. It's flipping amazing. Follow me on Instagram, Jersey, WCR Nation, blah, blah, blah. There you go. That's the intro. It was long. I'm sorry. Still flustered from the dumb intro that I did before this. But anyway, but this week we're talking about giving your customers value. And what does that mean? Of course you give them value because you do such a great job, right? Value itself doesn't necessarily need to change anything that you do. So what you're doing now, all the value you're giving them, you just have to explain it. It's very, very simple. But there's more that you're offering than just clean windows, right? We talked about this in the past as having your USP, right? Having your unique selling point. That's huge. And a lot of you don't have that. Uh, if you're on YouTube, comment down below if you've figured it out yet. Because I'm getting slowly getting people who are sending me messages like, hey, I figured it out. Here's what it is. What do you think? But you have to find out why somebody's going to buy you, right? Once they call you, once they get you, once they, you know, initiate something with you, now it's your time to tell them what your USP is, what they get by buying you. Because that's essentially what they're doing. Is they're buying you. No matter what you do. You may be in a janitorial situation. You may be a window cleaner, pressure washer, heck, lawn care, painter, whatever. Whatever you do, why they choose you over the next guy who does the exact same thing as you, that's your USP. And somebody else can't have it. Otherwise, it wouldn't be a unique selling point. But I hit on that all the time. It was shocking to find out that people didn't, uh, didn't know their USP. So... Figure that out. But once you get that, and once somebody comes and wants to realize why they should hire you over the next person, now is the time to show them the whole, but wait, there's more kind of thing, right? And what that is, is 
the everything that's the subliminal almost, the stuff that they don't see, and the things that you're going to bring to light. Let me kind of give you some examples of just different ideas of what it is. So when you go to somebody and you know you're going to be going up against somebody, this comes into play with residential, even storefront, and it comes in especially with commercial because commercial usually has to get their three bids. Um, but what you need to do is tell them everything they get with you. Most people are like, hey, here's the price. Or, hey, here's the price. We've been in business for 20 years. Neat. You're telling me you can't suck for 20 years? You're telling me that um, Saturn was around? Pontiac was around? Uh, Sears was around? I believe Kmart's, uh, if you're into, uh, in the Midwest, Shopko's, all these places who, you know, they've been in business for 20 years and now they're not in business, <laughs> right? Blockbuster. There's one Blockbuster left, right? You can be in business for a long time and still destroy your business very, very quickly. Look at Boeing. Boeing just had to pull back their entire new fleet of planes, what do you think that's going to do to them? VW, it almost killed VW to have the whole diesel debacle lying on their stats kind of thing. They almost pulled out of the U.S. Maybe here, say, I don't know, I'm not a rep there. But you can be in business for a very long time and still screw it up. doesn't mean you're good just because you've been doing it for a while. So what you need to do is find the things that help you differentiate from the other guy. Now, it doesn't even have to be things that are new it just has to be things that you bring up to people. Kind of an example about that would be, you know, we have a $2 million umbrella policy. $5 million, $1 million, it doesn't matter. The word million's in there, it's like, wow. Everybody else has it, man. You know what a general liability policy is? Probably minimally, minimal, minimally a million bucks. But if you bring it up, it's thing. Because they'll look at those things and, well, this guy's got a million dollar insurance policy. Well, yeah, the other guy does too. He just didn't say it, right? Uh, we, you know, you could say uh, the the year thing, but what about your employees themselves? You know, our employees all go through a four-week rigorous training policy. You know, we have a seven-day rain guarantee, right? All of our employees are fully bonded. Whatever you have to put out there that sells more of why they go from you. And here's the concept. The dumb thing I did in the beginning, the whole wait, there's more kind of thing, that's why it is, is because all those people who are, who are like, oh, cool, I'm buying, they've already bought. But the people who are on the fence, well, that's a great deal. I mean, you know, I always wanted a calculator for $22. But wait, there's more. If you call right now, you'll get an extra calculator for no extra money. You just pay shipping and handling. Right? People, what? Two of them? Right? It used to be that that was like a shocking, that was a trigger puller. People go, two of them, wow, that put me over the edge, right? Giving them value. Now it's just expected, of course, when it comes to infomercials, if there even are infomercials. I haven't watched like broadcast TV in pff, two years probably. But um, giving them more or at least showing them more gets people to sign up with you. They get people to go with you. Here's the thing in a commercial world, and I just had this uh, this morning or yesterday, and somebody had said, uh, like, hey, do you have any tips on getting commercial work? Yes. Yes, I do. Here's a big one, and I learned this from Dave Carroll, and it was absolutely game-changing. Game-changing. But it was the proposals you put together need to be over the top. Over the top. Because here's the thing, in a commercial world, every single project that a property manager gets from a new dumpster to painting to changing the light bulbs, elevator service, groundskeep, all that stuff, they get three bids on everything. So they're inundated with bids. Now we've all been somewhere where the guy before you gave them a paper, you know, uh, uh, said Office Depot on the top right and it was just a carbon copy and they wrote windows ten dollars and they gave it to him and that was it well great you, you sold yourself on the price 
but uh, that's your only selling point at that point, right? But what we did was we switched over to proposal packets. Now we went into a folder. First we did proposal packets, which were awesome with a software that he had. Um, and I haven't uh, checked it lately to see if it's even still a software, but it was, it was awesome. It put these things together. It was like a seven page document, full color pictures, uh, you know, verbiage, uh, the bid equipment, your certificate of insurance, uh, any affiliation, so WCRA, PWRA membership, PWNA, IWCA, all those things that you know you're members of. You put it all on there. Better Business Bureau, Andrew's List, and top five percent, whatever. All that stuff is on there. You're throwing them with so much info that the other guy hands them a carbon copied Office Depot thing that says Windows ten dollars or whatever. Or say you're doing a commercial project, and they hand in one sheet, and even if it's a fancy sheet, that's what they hand in. They're looking at all that stuff and all of a sudden, boom, your packet pops up. Here's where we went to even the next level. That helped us. Amazing. I said, listen, this is just costing us like a click of a button. We print it out. Sure, it's nice. But I want to blow people away. I want to be on such another level that no person in their right mind is going to question that. They could put the proposals in front of a, in front of a, um, uh, a board and go, look at these guys. And they go, holy cow, what else do they do? We've had that. We've had that. So what we did was we did a uh, folder presentation packet type thing. And what we did was we had custom folders made. And inside the folders, there was tabs. And the tabs were cascading. So you had one tab here, one tab here, one tab. So you could read all the tabs. You grab the tab and that pulls out all the information. And we loaded that thing. Full color, beautiful folders, right? The tabs, the everything. It was the same stuff in all of them except for the pay, the sheet itself. You know, the actual proposal that we printed up that looked awesome itself. And uh, we had that and our, um, our insurance policy printed up on uh, fancy uh, fiber paper, I think it's called, that real thick stuff. Like this thing, you got this thing and it was like you just bought a Mercedes. That's not fancy enough. You just bought a Lamborghini, right? It was so over the top awesome. And I'm telling you, it jacked our uh, approval rating up through the roof. And everybody goes, oh, aren't those folders a lot? Well, yeah, a whole folder packet may have cost $5. You know, heck, maybe $10. But what are you doing project-wise for commercial stuff? I would happily spend $10 per job, per bid, to get most of the bids. Like, if you think about your clothes right now with commercial stuff, it probably is not that great. You're always competing against other people, and you're not always going to be the lowest. So paying $10 a piece may be excessive now when you have a lower close rate. Who cares anyway? This is why you are as awesome as you are. But once you jack that close rate up to 90%, I mean, it doesn't matter. $10 to get a $10,000 job every six months, every quarter? I mean, we got we had jobs that are paying like uh, uh, $3,000 something dollars every uh, month, every quarter something. I mean, you're, you're talking about numbers that don't matter in the scheme of things, even if it was $50. For a proposal packet, you know? But blowing them away with all of the stuff that they, it's there. The other guys may have it. You may be, you guys in your area may also be members of the WCRA, PWRA. They may be members of the IWCA and all the other groups and better business bureaus and uh, home advisors, you know. Uh, what was the home advisor one? It's um, uh, certified or background checked certified or something. Put all of that in there. Like, you are putting yourself out. We're glorified janitors, right? We're, 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 we're a, a industry that is uh, seen from the outside as people who just scrub bird poop off windows. Like, that's what we, what we are. So to step up from the other guy who spent $50 and now he's a window cleaner, you have to do that. Like, getting the proposal packets to sell that kind of stuff puts you on a whole other level. Well, let's take that same mindset and put it into residential. Now, I bid uh, almost all of my residential right there over the phone, right? I do. But what we did was we also had a um, packet that we sent uh, via email. 
And so whenever we're getting estimates, okay, well, I uh, just need a little bit of information to get you this estimate. We can do it right over the phone. Just ask a couple simple questions. What's your name? What's your number in case we get disconnected? What's the address of the property, of course? And what's your email? We'll send all this information to you so you have it. And of course, we always ask how you hear of us. That's the end. But anyway, we do the whole bid. We get it all together. Most of the time, you have your 75 to 80% close rate. Um, they're going to say yes right over the phone because I'm an awesome salesperson. I can help you understand why to choose us. You can too, right? Um, if you have that close rate, say you're the highest one in the area and your close rate may be even a little bit less. Oh, well, you know, I'm still getting numbers. I'm still getting some things from people. I'll let you know. Okay, great. Well, hey, I'm here for you if you have any questions. And if even if you don't choose us, if you have any questions on the other contractor, I would rather help you uh, understand the industry and what they should be doing and charging than uh, getting the work from you. And they go, really? Wow, okay. Yeah, definitely. I'm going to shoot you over this packet when we're done here via email. You'll have it all. And then if there's any questions, let me know. I send over a seven-page document. Now, it's all PDFs. It's all at the bottom. They can click it all and see it all. I'll even embed it in the email so that when they're scrolling the email, they can see all the pages. It's a cover sheet. Hey, here's who we are. Everybody's picture on the front, right? Pictures with the family through the thing. Uh, families are very, very powerful. Your insurance certificate. The same thing with all the orgs and docs. You know, a little story about you and who you are, what you do in the window cleaning thing that, you know, all of our techs had IDs and always have IDs and it will show you a star rating system. I had a page that explained our star rating system and all the things they had to go through for the star rating system. By the time they get to the end to see it all, they've just sold themselves because the next guy is on the phone and go, oh yeah, I could do it for cheaper. And they're looking at that thing going, well, okay, but... Where's your million dollar insurance policy? Well, I'm still, and they'll come back to you. I'm telling you. Putting it out there, letting them know, and giving them value will let them sell themselves on you. You want to list everything that you offer. Now, don't go stupid on this. I don't even know if that's an offensive word. I don't care. But don't go stupid on it. Like, don't say, we use number two pencils. I mean, don't go so drastic. But there's a lot of things that could be impressive, which joining the WCRA is not impressive to any of us because we know you just pay some money and now you get all the perks to it, right? But to somebody, seeing that you're part of an association shows them that you care enough to spend money or care enough to be part of something in your industry. Look, this guy's doing research. This guy knows his industry. If you go to a, t uh, a mechanic and they have all their certifications on there and they tell you, hey, you know, every single month we have to go through certifications here. You're going, wow, these guys really actually care. They're not just like doing it to, I mean, you can, you can sense that somebody cares from that kind of thing. That's why you put that in there. Insurance policies, everybody goes, well, I don't want to tell them about my insurance because then they'll try to get me for insurance. No, people are not out there purposely doing insurance scams because it's like a I don't know if it's a federal offense. I'm pretty sure there's something, some kind of tether on there. It's not a good thing. People are not out there trying to get your insurance money. Could it have happened ever once or twice in the history of human? Yes, but it's not happening. Put your insurance information out there because they're going to assume you have insurance anyway. People always say that if you have a logoed and lettered truck or like a wrap truck, people are trying to get in car accidents with you because they know you got insurance. Uh, I mean... I could see maybe, possibly, but really that's not happening with everybody. Nobody wants to get in an accident unless they got some beater, right? And then even if I smash your $1,000 car, you're going to get $1,000 unless you're fake, you know, whiplash or something. But, you know, putting it all in there shows them why you're worth what you are. Having an entire page that explains your USP or the things that make you different. Why we're different at the top. Seven day rain guarantee, boom, explain what it is, right? Uh, we run a star system on all of our employees, so you know who you're getting and what they've learned. Boom, explain it. Like listing all that stuff is showing them the value. It's it's the wait, there's more. Now you get if you call right now, you'll get a free ruler, you know, but it just is adding value. It's making them decide themselves why they should go with you. You've done all you can for a sale, right? It's the other part that is is as important really and they want they want people want to hear 
what you have to secure the decision. Every a transaction happens, not to kind of nerd on in transactions, but it's when both parties are happy for the most part. No one buys anything that they don't need if they're not happy with it, right? People buy a Ferrari for $200,000 because that's what they want, and they're happy paying $200,000. Somebody sells a Ferrari for $200,000 because they're happy getting $200,000 for a Ferrari, right? If you had, say you went and wanted to sell a Honda Civic. Yeah, it's a new Honda Civic. It's nice. Not top of the line, but it's nice. They want to sell that Honda Civic for $200,000. No one's going to buy it. No one's going to buy it. No one. No one's going to buy that for $200,000 because no one would be happy paying $200,000 for a car they can buy for $30,000 or whatever Honda Civic goes for, right? So both people have to be happy. The big thing is, is when it comes time for people to pull the trigger, sometimes you get this. People cross their, you know, uh, I don't I do not do anything. The first thing I got to check my, you know, people, they've already made their decision and that they're going to be extra cautious. And that's cool. But I want to tell them all the information so that they could possibly, A, I'm in another level than everybody else out there. I've showed them my value. But on, on the next one is I want them to think about it as, and logically and go, well, it would be stupid for me to pay these other guys because they're like 20 bucks cheaper and I get all this other stuff with this other guy. It would be dumb, right? Go on Amazon one time. Whatever you're buying, there's probably one of those that comes, you can either get the regular one or for a couple bucks more, you can get it with the case and the, the this and the that. Well, those ones are always better sellers because you get so much more junk. It's all, you know, maybe little pieces that you don't need. Go, go and look at anything GoPro case. Go buy a GoPro case one time. You can find a 328 piece GoPro kit. That doesn't even come with the camera. It's just a case. But it also comes with seals and new uh, stainless steel screws that you could add into the flipper pad. And then there's seven colors to choose from. And those are the ones that people buy because they go, well, I would obviously pay an extra $10 for that to get all that stuff. It would be stupid for me to buy just the case if I got all that other free stuff. That's where you are. That's where you want to be. You want people to convince themselves by seeing the value that you're offering. It also will def differentiate you from the competition, which also means you're in another league. Like, like Michael Geller says, and I say this a lot, but he said when he was a magician that his like mentor said to him that don't be a magician, be Michael Geller. Because there's only one Michael Geller, and it doesn't come down the price. But if you're just a magician, there's lots of magicians at lots of different prices. And that's where you want to be. Be one of you. Be the only you. You're not part of your competition. You're not even the same league as your competition. All of a sudden, price does not matter like it mattered when you didn't differentiate yourself. And I know we kind of talk about this stuff, but putting this, putting the actual um, time into adding value is huge. Even at regular people, when you hand them the packet, if you're doing stuff to envelope packets, add in there all the things that they're getting because they hired you. Secure their decision with you based on the stuff they're getting it'll help you not only close but keep a lot more people and now you have to decide that it's just like your usp which like i said i love comments love them and if you're on youtube or even if you're listening go to youtube just search wcr nation ep uh nine three and that'll pull this episode up but just comment down let me know what your usp is your, your unique selling point i want to know people are scared to say it they're they're they either don't have one or they're scared to say it because every time I ask, people don't do it. So if you get a chance, do it. But once you're differentiated from your competition, now you know all of the things you do, which of those things that add value could be your USP, right? In the area that uh, I was uh, in, one of our USPs, because you'll switch on whatever kind of you feel like it changes. Somebody else might get the same one was a seven-day rain guarantee. And people always go, man, you can't do that. You'll be going back to every house every time it rains. No. In the, I think, 13 years that I did that, uh, that rain guarantee, I went back one time, and the lady was just trying to get free windows. I went there. It was on our route. We sent the guys. We know rain doesn't dirty windows, but it helps our scheduling, right? They show up, and they look at the window and go, oh, sorry, ma'am, we don't see any spotting. And she's like, oh, I, I thought if it rained, you just come back. Nope, only if they're dirty, we make them look beautiful for you. Oh, oh okay, I, I didn't know. Of course you did. You're just trying to get a free window cleaning, right? People are horrible sometimes. But that was once 
in 13 years. And what a rain guarantee does is not only does it make you sound way bigger and better than anybody else. Whoa, guarantee? A guarantee? Yeah, we have a 100% satisfaction guarantee and a seven-day rain guarantee. What does the other guy got? Uh, he's got a single sheet of paper. He wrote the word, you know, $200 on and stapled, a, you know, cheesy business card to. That's what that guy's got. <laughs> what guarantee? It's not even a guarantee the guy's going to show up, right? But that was the USP. That sells us. That We told everybody about that. Because nobody uses it, but it's a value. If for some reason we got acid rain and smog and local wildfires and something, and it did dirty your windows, hey, I want you to be happy enough that I'm going to go back and make it look perfect. Right? But the big thing is, is it doesn't mess up our scheduling. This time of year you get a lot of rain. People are going to reschedule. That's really the reason we do it. But it adds value. 100% satisfaction guarantee. We all have that. And that just means if you're not happy, we'll make you happy. That's what that means. It doesn't mean, you know, some people word it differently and say, uh, you know, you don't pay a dime until you're happy. Or if you're not happy with our service, you don't pay us anything. Awesome. Those are great ways to do it. But here's the same thing. If somebody goes, ah, there's a spot on this window. Well, let me get that right now. Take the spot off. Anything else? Oh, no, no, no the window looks good. Guess what? They're happy now. It doesn't mean that there's no chance to fix what you had if there was something. It just means that they know when the transaction is done, they will be 100% happy. They will not pay you a dime until they are 100% happy. It's easy stuff to put out there, but it puts you apart. People feel at ease. They know their decision's right because you have all the guarantees. Million dollar policy? That's a million dollars? Holy cow! They don't know, right? Because they're used to car insurance. It's like $30,000 policy or $40,000 policy. So showing them everything that you have, and you've spent good money to have everything you have to put you in the position you are, show them. Use it to sell. Use it to close them. Use it to make them excited about the purchase. And when someone is excited about their purchase, they're going to continue to have it, and they're going to have no qualms. I don't know if that's even a word. (laughs) <laughs> anyway, but uh, they're not going to have any issues with having you or forever because they're just so happy with you. They're so settled on their decision, right? Like they're just so happy about that decision. You have to put it out there. Let me know your USP. Um, and if you're still watching and you're on YouTube, thumbs up. If you thought it was halfway all right, even halfway, thumbs up. Uh, if you, uh, want, put a comment down below. It really does help us actually with our rankings. Uh, YouTube is actually the lower of the YouTube versus, um, what we get on podcasts. Of course, if you are on a podcast, go ahead and give us a review if you don't mind and you got a free second. Either way, it's awesome. But most importantly, above all of that stuff, call me for any of your window cleaning stuff. Text me for any of your window cleaning stuff. Just be awesome. Let me let me be your rep. I want to be your rep. I want to be the guy that you know when uh, you know you have to get supplies. That's what I'm here for. And some people too. I always see names come across that are clients of mine, but they're like smaller orders, and they probably just were like, oh, I don't want to bug you. Or I get people that call and be, like, Hey, could you put this in? I'm sorry. It's not sorry. I don't care the size. It could be a little, big, eighteen dollar order. It doesn't matter. I want to put them all in for you because that's what I do. That's what I'm here for, and that's how I make my cheddar. So let me make my cheddar. This week's code, if you do call and you want 5% off, this week's code is telling me your USP. I'm going to get them out of you anyway. If you have it, tell them, just say the word USP and I'm going to ask you what's your USP. You tell me what your USP is, your unique selling point, what makes you different. You'll get 5% off your order, your entire order. So yeah, there you go. Bonus. Bonus round right give me a call there's enough babbling for you guys but uh, go out there and until next week uh figure out who you are what you're selling and be epic